It's Thursday, November 29th, 2012. This is the 404 Show on CNET.com. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Jeff Nimoy. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm Zach Weinberg, and this is the show where we enter the cave with Jeff Nimoy. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. please welcome to the 404 program, Mr. Jeff Nimoy. What's up, guys? Round of applause I, for I Mr. saw me Nimoy. on the monitor, so I jumped the gun a little you bit. You like that? <laughs> yeah. It's the future of podcasting right hey, here. Man. It's all right there. I, I saw my key light. I jumped in there. I, I <laughs> so how you doing, man? Thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. This is great. It's our pleasure. We had a little short notice. Uh, we're glad you were able to work it in and, yeah. and hop on the program today. And totally. We appreciate I'm, that. I'm a native New Yorker. Right and, on. I'm um, visiting for you know Thanksgiving and a little extended after that. Right on. So uh, I love being back here. The cold, I'm not so uh, into. But, oh, uh, you come on. You're a native <laughs> New Yorker. You I know, know but I've been in there. L.A. a long time. I've been, you know, my, my blood is all You forget <laughs> real quick how real quick. terribly cold yeah. it is <laughs> in New York. But it's fine. I'm, I'm digging the weather so far. Yeah. So, Jeff, you're a man of many talents. Just like everyone named Jeff. They're very talented <laughs> people. Yeah. Just like all around yeah. good guys. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about, what, so, you, so you're so you a man of many talents, like we said. Uh, you do a lot of voice acting. You do yeah. directing, producing. But can you give us a little background sure. on that stuff, and then we'll get into what you're yeah. doing right well, now. Well, I started off as a, an improv actor in L.A. Mm-hmm. I went to NYU here right on. Uh, for acting. I went to L.A. Couldn't get arrested as an actor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but... Uh, through my improv, I used to do this bit in my improv act uh, where you take an old movie and you redub it and put a new comedy soundtrack on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I pitched that to NFL Films uh, as a segment, mm-hmm. you know, where I would take all their films and take away all the sound and redo it so, like, uh, John Elway is ordering a pizza on the phone instead of talking to the offensive Okay, right upstairs. on. Upstairs. <laughs> and uh, I pitched that to NFL Films, and they loved it. They gave me a segment on their show, NFL Films Presents. And for five years, I did that. I was nominated for three Emmys. That's awesome. I won once, which was very nice. nice. Very cool. Congratulations. Does not suck. No. <laughs> Winning an Emmy does the not suck. Yeah, it doesn't suck. What do you, where is your Emmy now? Uh, you, it's at home. Just hang out. <laughs> it's down. right here. Let me get it for you. Because, you know, that's like a, a, I feel like that's yeah. a, an ongoing joke with some people, like where they, they'll like bring it around with them. And yeah. be like, oh, I, do you have a problem with my Emmy right here or something? I actually did bring it on a job interview. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, I said, let me get my resume. Yeah, I pulled there you it go. out. And I had the resume stuck on the little <laughs> wings. I was like, oh, this thing, this thing, is, it's always getting stuck on things. Here you go. You handed your resume. Yeah, I did not get that job. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> that's messed up. I know, I know. So uh, anyway, I did that. And um, then Fox Kids, I was doing, a, I was still acting at the time as well. Okay. And I, I did this pilot with Wayne Brady, of all people, who I saw was on your show. Yeah, for time. sure. Yeah. And we... Uh, the pilot didn't go, but the producer of that saw my NFL film stuff, mm-hmm. and he was like, "You know what? We've got all these really bad Japanese cartoons. Mm. <laughs> can you can you maybe take away all the sound and put a new comedy soundtrack on those?" And that show was Digimon, and that was a big hit. And yeah, I, I adapted the first two seasons of Digimon for American audiences, and I directed, voice directed them, and uh, it was a huge hit. And I've been. Uh, Stuck in anime ever since. <laughs> well, that's that's not a bad thing. You, no, you act like that's a bad thing. It's I, not bad. It's anime is super popular, especially with our demographic. Yeah, it they is. They love is. Yeah. anime. And I always play, I played characters and all the things I directed. I, in Digimon, I played Tentomon. Tentomon! <laughs> that's awesome. Tentomon, Digivolve 2! <laughs> Kabuterimon. Best Justin, job I can, ever. Yeah. I can see you're a fan. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Justin's a little brother. My brother's 11 years old. He loves Digimon, yeah, so yeah. he's going to really enjoy it, this show. Digimon's been good for me. Yeah. Right? It's been good to me, and I, I really love it. And I, I went back uh, after a few years and did season five as well, mm-hmm. which uh, I just love. And I also, from my anime fans might know me as the voice of Wolfwood from a show called Trigun. Mm-hmm. I don't know oh, I know Trigun. Yeah, very Who's popular. That? I feel like that's on um, Adult Swim. It is, right. Yeah. Like a, sp- a futuristic spaghetti western. Type. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I got to use my own voice for a change on that show, which I love. So, and um, I'm reading here, you did something for uh, Beautiful Joe as well? You know, I actually did not. You didn't? Is that's, that just a typo? That, it, is that a... IMDB said yeah. that Jason Palmer, who is a, an actor who I've directed before, right? Jason Palmer, is uh, the voice of Beautiful Joe, uh-huh. and he sounds a lot like me. So from but, oh, from like the Cap the Capcom games and yes, stuff? okay. And IMDb said that Jeff Nimoy's, uh, AKA his uh, stage name, like a uh, uh, pseudonym, right, is uh, 
Jason Palmer. But that's, Jason Palmer's a real guy. Yeah, that's so <laughs> wacky. I know. Well, I go to these conventions to speak all the time. These sure. anime conventions. Yeah. yeah. And I've got all these beautiful Joe fans showing no up. No way. And I feel no. terrible. And one time. You should just do it. You'd be like, look, it's not, it's not me, but I'll sign it. <laughs> but I know. just don't want to take it away from Jason. Of course. Right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this will clear the air now. Finally, everyone will know. But there was this one guy. He was, you know, a slow, you know, I don't want to call him, you know, he was disabled, okay. mentally disabled. Sure. You know? So uh, he was the biggest beautiful Joe fan. He came just to see me. Oh, that's oh. awesome. He had all this beautiful Joe stuff. Oh, man. And I, at first I tried to explain to him that I wasn't beautiful Joe. And he was like, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Oh, it says you. He was about to cry. I was oh, like, man. I said, you know what? I am beautiful. Yeah, there you go. For I the signed, purposes I of signed, this meeting, that's I am awesome. beautiful Joe. I signed everything for the guy. Oh, you know, that's his awesome. His mother was very grateful. But I felt terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's such a weird. I, that, a, I feel like that happens more often than you think. Mm -hmm. IMDb, is, and I've tried a million times to get IMDb to take my name off. Yeah, of it. they just won't. And they just won't. Yeah. Man. Uncool, man. I, Uncool. I'm always curious with voice actors. Um, we haven't actually had many on our show, no, but no, no. is there a character that you really just hate doing? I mean, everyone says they, they love you yeah. know, most of the characters, well, but there's got to be one. I didn't hate Tentomon too much, but four hours in a booth of going, oh, no, yeah. super <laughs> shocker. You know, it, it'll, it'll really wear you down after yeah. a while. <laughs> I can understand, yeah. for sure. But I love doing... Uh, Wolfwood for Trigun because it was my own voice. I could do that guy forever. And he was a chain smoking, heavy drinking, womanizing priest. Oh, right on. Ty Not a stretch. Yeah. He's, a, he's a cool looking character too, as well. Yeah, and he always had a cigarette in his yeah, mouth. So, it's pretty so bad. I used, to, I used to, you know, uh, act with the cigarette in my mouth all the time. When, oh, right on. When he had it on, sta on screen. So that was Sweet. pretty cool. So I loved him. But Tentomon, it just it was a very strain on the voice after a while. Yeah. I can understand that, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Um, so now, shifting into what's going on with you now, yeah. you sort of, uh, you know, moved along, and now you're sort of venturing into the world of online dating. I know, it's crazy. Well, Ooh. Which seems like an insanely lucrative sort of thing, because now it's like, that's where everybody is looking to find yeah. love. That's what I hear. It could right. be lucrative. Right. Uh, hey, let's rock and roll. <laughs> let's hope it happens. But, you know, before we get into that, sure. because that... That was that directly was related to the food thing that I got into. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, the the caveman diet. Right, right. Uh, which comes comes out of my animation background actually, because I was writing a screenplay one time about these little creatures that uh, I was doing some research on. I, I just wanted to give them like sort of a caveman background. Okay. Mm. And I just Googled what did the cavemen eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff on the caveman diet came up, and I was fascinated by it. So, so the caveman diet has been a thing. It's been a thing for maybe twenty-five years. Okay, is it's, this the same thing as the paleo it's diet? It's exactly the same thing. Okay, just the different. Some people call it Neanderthin as mm -hmm. well. <laughs> Neanderthin. It's all the same, <laughs> and it's pretty much eating what the caveman ate right. or having access to it. I mean, it's impossible in today's modern world to eat like a caveman. Of course, but uh, it's just all organic. You know, whatever meat you eat should be like grass-fed beef, pasture-raised chickens. Wild caught fish, wild game, mm -hmm. all, all organic things. Anything you can't eat raw is out, you know. And also dairy's out because the caveman would never, you know, have unless he killed a nursing something. animal, he right. would never right. have access to dairy. So it's no dairy whatsoever. What no about dairy, eggs? no grains, eggs. Sure, a lot of eggs. Are eggs, eat. not a, a dairy. I, no, it's not. No, okay. People think it is, but it's yeah, I don't not. know why. No, it has nothing because, to do with milk. because supermarkets put it in the dairy section. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> damn <laughs> well, they need to start up a caveman section, <laughs> and then uh, you will know exactly where to go. Right, right. So I, uh, I saw this research on the caveman diet on on Google. And yeah, it just fascinated me. The the things they were saying, I couldn't believe. They were like, you, you know, cavemen didn't have cancer and they didn't have diabetes. How do they know that? They know. Well, how do they know? <laughs> they. I, but, they're anthropologists. I don't yeah. know. They're, they're, but can they tell that from, like, fossils and stuff? I guess they can, right. Yeah? All right. So, anyway, I said, I'm going to try this diet for mm -hmm. two weeks a month. And I lost, like, 25 pounds in a month. A, mm. Is that healthy? Is that okay? I I, like everyone thought I had cancer. I was. Oh, <laughs> I, but that's was, a lot. That's a lot of weight. To it lose. is. I had all this like loose skin in my neck. You had like uh, a gobbler. And I, yeah, I was like uh, Clint Eastwood on a bad day. <laughs> 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 uh, but I had never felt better. My skin cleared up. Yeah. Uh, and here I am in New York now, eating like crazy. I'm breaking out like crazy. And Are you really swelling up from uh, the cheating. salt? Yeah. I'm cheating like crazy. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm doing a series on my blog called "The New York Eating Cheat." Well, when in Rome, I mean, exactly. Come on. Right? Yeah. I, I'm in New York. I, I have to have pizza. I have to have Chinese food. Of yeah, course. of course. Yeah, this is, you know, tonight is um, Katz's Deli. Oh, know. there you go. It's Mecca. Yeah. You, you have know, to. Gotta, you have to do I've got to make a pilgrimage to, to Katz's <laughs> Deli. So, so anyway, um, 
uh, the caveman diet. So I started a blog on that, and that became very popular. I have about mm-hmm. 37,000 readers on it. Oh, right on. And I just released an ebook on uh, Wednesday about that called uh, The Cooking Caveman. Uh-huh. And the, the publisher wanted like every keyword known to mankind in that <laughs> title. So it's really long. And then, wow. I, and then I added something at the end to show people it's, it's, it's a comedy, you know. Mm. Um, and it's uh, how to lose weight, eat healthy, create mouth-watering paleo recipes, and piss off everyone you know. Yeah, <laughs> nice. That, that's what I actually have a friend that's on the paleo diet right yeah. now, and it's not just the diet; it's also his whole lifestyle. It's a whole he lifestyle. exercises too. He's got into the barefoot right. running thing right. too. Right, all of it. So it's all it's all a kind of right. an ecosystem. It's very big with CrossFitters. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 barefoot running? Yeah. So there's In this trend toward <laughs> not completely barefoot, but they have you these know, new sneakers shoes. that oh, the toe are, sneakers, right, those things. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Okay. That are designed to sort of take uh, the weight off your ankle, and so you get a better. Uh, you get a better rotation. When you use, you'll be skinny. You'll just die from hepatitis from the needle that <laughs> yeah, you step yeah, exactly. in, running along the running along the East River. Yeah, totally. You'll be skinny though. It's okay. I don't want to blow a tire if you know what I mean. Like, you're, you're really that's fine. Paleolithic out there. men didn't really live that long anyway. Right, but it? that was because they were chased by lions, yeah. you know, right? not yeah, because they they were eating the wrong things. Well, J- Justin does bring up a good point. There is a very big sort of conflict with the caveman yeah. diet. They lived 25 years. I mean, yeah. by, we're well, all dead yeah. in caveman times. Well, right they had to. Do a lot. They had to work a lot harder than we. Sure. Did. They didn't have houses. <laughs> right. They were prey. You know? Right. They were not on the top of the food. They chain. were very <laughs> much in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. So they had to run a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> out oh. of necessity. Imagine just con- not even being at the top of the food chain. <laughs> I know. Like you know, like we sort of are now with our guns and our weapons yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. But there was a long period of time when humans were not. Exactly. That was well, go to the middle of the ocean now. Yeah. You. Oh, that's why I'm afraid. You of sink to the bottom. <laughs> you go to the middle of the ocean. You literally. You go down the chain. Yeah. yeah. Your yeah. rank You're just screwed. plummets. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. terrifying. To me. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely terrifying. Well, the zombie apocalypse is coming. In well, of course. Yes. Eat those. We're well, that, all, we're all I feel like we're in good shape though with the shotguns and the, and, the, and all. <laughs> We've had so much artillery. training from the yeah. TV shows and the video games. We're good. Yeah. We're we're okay. Yeah. Totally. So I I like that you're. It doesn't sound like you're super strict about this diet. Um, my friend that's on the paleo yeah. diet, it, it's become sort of a neurotic obsession with him. It more, than, more so than just a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. But it seems like that's more your overarching theory. Well, it can be, but the thing is, I thought to myself, look, I'm a New Yorker. Am uh-huh. I never going to have pizza again? Right. right. Forget about it. I'm going <laughs> to have pizza again. I'm going right. to have a hot dog again. So I cheat about once a week, and it keeps me sane. There's so much temptation out there. Just once a week sort of satisfies that. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, I'm cooking six days a week, and it's it's enough already. Yeah. Disgusting. So what did you eat for Thanksgiving? Well, again, I just used it as a cheat meal. Yeah. However, I do have a whole thing of Thanksgiving in the book that I did last year. Uh, a wild turkey, mm-hmm. you know, that... Uh, so any animal I eat should also be paleo. They eat what they're supposed to eat in nature, right. not shot full of antibiotics, fed corn and soy, whatever they eat naturally. So a wild turkey. And the whole point of the book is I take my favorite classic recipes and I paleo rise them, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I make uh, stuffing with uh, almond butter bread right. that I've made. You know, it's Low of, carb. Yeah, well, I don't count carbs. I don't count calories. Any of that. It's just if it, if you can eat it raw, you can you can cook with it mm-hmm. pretty much. So uh, I make I make bread out of nut flour or coconut flour, things like that. No wheat, no grains of any sort, mm-hmm. you know, no sugar. I use raw organic honey, mm-hmm. and I can make things like uh, apple pie. And uh, I gotta taste some of this. Yeah, stuff. and I make I make banana ice cream. I have a couple of videos out there as yeah. well on uh, the the cooking ca- the cooking caveman channel. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's cookingcaveman.tumblr.com. Yeah, well, cookingcaveman.com. Oh, will we'll take bring you in there. the same thing. Yeah, okay. we'll take Excellent. Yeah, it's just housed the Tumblr. Mm. That's, uh, yeah, that's. And I'm... then on YouTube, it's the Cooking Caveman channel. Oh, so you have a channel as well. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I feel like I, I'm always open to some sort of diet, but I like how it, it sounds like this is much more flexible. It, in terms of. It's as f- flexible as you want to make yeah. it. You know, people are always like, can you eat this? Well, I can eat anything. Of course. And I'm choosing to do this. But the, the, health, the health benefits have been through the roof. Yeah. I, I always had high blood pressure my whole life, my right. whole adult life. Mm-hmm. It's perfect now. Really? Everything. Across the board, you name it, depression. My depression got better. Do you think it's, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people will sort of argue that this is something as a result of your, you know, of, of the strictness of like the self-control that undertaking a, a new sort of diet you know, sort of goes hand in hand with. It's possible, but, you, yeah, but here's well, I mean, the thing. Yeah. It's, it's like we're, we're not built to eat chemicals. Well, that's for, for sure. That's right. true. Yeah. We're not built to eat uh, things like grains and dairy. Yeah. I mean, 
it's all about, I don't want to get too into it, but it's alkaline versus acid. Okay. You know, and dairy is very acidic on our bodies, and, and, and uh, disease can't live in an alkaline body. So you want to eat as much alkaline food as possible. Sure. You know, what we were built for. Right. Like, you never see a lion in the Serengeti with a head cold. It just doesn't happen. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't, yeah. Elephants don't get cancer. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they die of either being eaten or injury or man. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and we're the same way. And, and we've only been eating this Western diet for about 10,000 years. Okay. Before that, we were, you know, very healthy. We lived shorter lives because life was very hard. Mm -hmm. But um, we didn't have diseases like we have today. And this is all, and our bodies, evolution, 10,000 years isn't fast enough for us to evolve for this diet. Maybe uh, 100,000 years from now, we can eat grains, no problem, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason the biggest allergies out there right now are wheat, you know, gluten, mm -hmm. um, a dairy, lactose intolerant, right. and peanuts. What's There's the, a reason. Yeah, what's We're the not deal with the to peanut eat? stuff? Why are we allergic you to You know, that? you can't even have, like, peanuts in schools anymore. I know. You can't so even bad. look at a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It's like I, I, like, I feel like when we were growing up, yeah, there was they was not as widespread. But you can't go well, on an airplane now and get peanuts right. because the, the person sitting next to you will uh, have... The will break will start closing yeah. up. I'll tell you why. Because peanuts not only has... Uh, are we eating more grains than ever before and legumes like that, but... The way they're growing them is worse than ever before. We've got all these GMOs, these genetically modified organisms, where mm. not only are they spraying the plants, yeah. they're they're building the pesticide right into the seed itself now. Yeah. And it's really bad for us. And that's why this explosion in the last few years of all mm. these um, allergies, these food allergies. I know people who develop it later on in life. Who didn't develop a peanut well, allergy again, until they were 20. It, again, because that's the peanuts themselves are being grown differently yeah. now than they used to be. Mm -hmm. Well, now let me answer the, the question you asked before. Sure. So one reader asked me a question, and they were like, how do you date? Do you, do you force your dates to eat this way? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I guess I have to create a caveman dating site. <laughs> 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 the only logical response to <laughs> that. Right. Well, obviously. So, and then I realized, well, it's not just cavemen. It's anyone with an allergy, a peanut allergy, food allergy, people on Weight Watchers. Right. Or just foodies. Or like, you know, I've been on dates with people like, I won't date anyone unless they're a mm. sushi lover. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. It's a deal breaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I just started sameplate.com for that, for me, to find a girl. It's all selfish reasons. <laughs> it's fine. It's all to find that's, a girl. That's how Zuckerberg cool. started Facebook for selfish reasons <laughs> that's also. Right, so exactly. It's, it's, it is it's really okay. difficult to coexist if you have a conflicting diet though I have a right. friend that's going out with a guy that's completely vegan yeah. uh, militantly vegan yeah, yeah and uh, you know he won't even let her have food in the house they've been dating for five years so exactly. it's a kind of complicated thing and it's rare to see that yeah. coexistence and uh, I did some research and for women mostly food is one of the different diets was one of the major reasons they had for breaking up with men mm -hmm. really yeah. Wow. yeah it's mostly for women and, and there's there's it's no coincidence that I've got three times as many women on my site okay on same what's place the URL com. for this it's again? Same, <laughs> <laughs> Sameplate.com. Yeah, right so here, let's pull it up. I yeah. mean, it's it's very uh, it's very interesting because you. I'm just looking at the front page of some yeah. of the example profiles, dominated by women. Right. That's awesome. that's We're it. actually in the uh, in the. Um, process right now of changing the whole look of the thing. You know, oh, okay, cool. I, we're still a startup. We've only been launched since June 1st. Okay. So uh, I'm listening to the feedback of the beta testers right now on there mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, getting what they what they want, what they want out of a dating site. So we're making some changes right now, you know. What's, uh, what's the most sort of common feedback you've been getting? And have you had any uh, s success stories to the point uh, that you wouldn't think you'd be at Wait, by uh, Really quick, by, I also want you to explain how this works. So when you create a profile, you can select what kind of dieting preferences you exactly. want. Exactly, you kind can of food see you right want. up there. And the, mm -hmm. the, the, that's the, what separates my site from the others. Mm -hmm. there, there are a few other food-related sites, but this separates, it's, it's the search function. Mm -hmm. You can do a foodie search and then a diet search. Oh, so cool. Let's say I, you know, and that's perfect for me because I'm a foodie mm -hmm. on a restrictive diet. Wow, so, you can really just yeah, so build I'm, your own date right here. Yes, Frankenstein cool. yourself. Yeah. Right. So I'm looking for someone, uh, a girl who's into Chinese food, who's into pizza, who's into a great burger. Right. And at the same time, I'd like them to be all organic. You yeah. Know? So, you know, I'm not looking for someone to eat the way I look, but they have to be willing to eat my way six days a week if we get married. Sure. Because I'm not changing this diet. I'm going to be on this diet for the rest of my life. Really? But, hmm. but one day a week. I'm going to cheat my See, ass. See, I, I like that, man. <laughs> just not with the date, just with the food. Right, right, right. right, right. Let's, let's make yes, sure. Yes, yes, yes. It Different keeps kind of you cheating. sane. It keeps you sane. A lot of yeah. people go go on diets, and there was a South Beach diet, and the Atkinson. Yeah. yeah. It gets to the point <clears throat> where 
if you can't even enjoy it or give yourself something to look forward to, right. you're you're just you're you're suffering. You shouldn't be living to eat. It would of consume course. your entire and, lifestyle. And you keep thinking about it. You wake up. Right. I, I have yeah. friends who who've been on the Atkins on and they can't even eat mm -hmm. bread. And it's like the second they go back to eating bread, right. well, they blow back up yeah. to, and they gain thirty pounds. It's like yeah. that's not sustainable. That's well, not realistic. Well, Zach, you mentioned that diet, and Justin, you mentioned more of a lifestyle, and that's mm -hmm. what paleo definitely is. It's more of a lifestyle because diets don't work. And they're not built to work, you know. Yeah. Their their diet plans are being sold right. to you know. They're all brands. Yeah, they're yeah. trying to make money, and right. and they're hoping for like a twenty percent success rate, mm -hmm. so they can keep the propaganda mm -hmm. going. Do but, they even need that much? Because I feel like <laughs> the five percent that it would yeah. work, they wouldn't shut up about right. it. Right, probably. Yeah. So, but this is a lifestyle, and you cannot gain weight if you eat pure food. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Like mm -hmm. I, I've tried. You can eat as much paleo food as you want. If it's all organic, you're not eating grains, you're not eating dairy, uh, and, the, and no processed food. That's the biggest thing. No mm -hmm. processed food. You just can't help but find your natural body. What right. was the toughest thing for you to give up? Salt. Salt's Salt. been the toughest. Sodium in, in at, everything. Yeah, and at the beginning, everything tasted bland to me. Yeah. Everything. And I was a pickle freak, you know. We always talk about Katz's Deli, the, right. the pickles. And it's oh, like, man. you know, I They're love the them so you gotta much. you got to be there. Yeah. Right. But after about, I would say, a week, all of a sudden my taste buds became alive again. They, yeah. they woke up from the dormancy they were experiencing, <laughs> and everything started tasting fantastic. I'm like, that's what a tomato tastes like. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. you know? And also I'm eating an organic tomato instead right. of some thing they pick green and then shoot it full of red dye. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what the food industry has become. You know? are, are a lot of these ingredients... It's like impossible to find because I feel like a lot of people may look at this time and be deterred, you know, and they may say, yeah, you know what? I don't feel like ordering my food from uh, from Taiwan or something. Yeah, right. there are these very well, specific well, ingredients well, if, that you need. Can you get them? Well, if there's anywhere? a demand for it, you know, it'll happen. Like five years ago, no one knew what kale was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't turn a, a corner without finding a bag of kale chips. Right, right, right. But still, for the person who's in middle America, who's in, you know, bum, yeah. Bumville, Idaho, right. they, the caveman dad's probably it, not something It does sound like you're eating a lot at home, too, too, right? I'm eating at home all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And people are like, organic's real expensive. I can't afford it. But if you're eating at home a lot, you actually can. And also, you're not buying a jar of processed mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. You're making your mayonnaise at home. Yeah. You're not buying a jar of ketchup. You're making your ketchup at home. Mm -hmm. I always give the example of a hamburger. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I want a hamburger, I have to make the ketchup. I have to bake the bread. I have oh, to, you know, yeah. you know, when you say I'm doing make, everything but kill the cow. When you point. make the bread, can you explain that? Yeah. <laughs> so most bread is made with some kind of a grain. Right. You know, wheat, normally. Sure. Well, I can't eat wheat. Yeah. Well, I can, but I choose not to. So um, instead, I have this recipe with almond butter. Huh. I take almond butter. Um, it's only four ingredients, almond butter, eggs, lemon juice, and I do cheat a little bit with uh, baking soda to get a rise. Okay. But baking soda really is just ground up minerals, so I try to find the, the most cleanest, purest, less, pr least processed baking soda I can mm -hmm. find. Yeah. And, uh, and I make my bread out of that, and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And it toasts up well. It, you can eat it plain. And you can get those ingredients, in, uh, the almond butter. You, you can, can get, get almond, almond butter, butter anywhere. Every supermarket uh, yeah. in America. It's a, it's an inv it's a it's a commitment. It's a big commitment. It is a definite commitment. It's not for the lazy. Yeah, you know, I always call people lazy bastards in my right. book. Well, it's fine because <laughs> yeah. I'm in that category. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think Zach me too. Too. <laughs> in that category. I wanted to ask you if you have any tips for people that are just starting out on going on a diet. You know, for people that just have a completely unregulated diet right now, if right. they want to try the paleo diet, yeah. it must be really hard to just give up grains or give up gluten completely. It could be. Um, yeah. Do you have any tips on how to start? Yes, and just to touch on the people in middle America, Idaho, actually, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the heart of farmland. The tip is go to farmer's markets. Mm. Yeah. Start shopping there. Stay away from the supermarkets, you know? <clears throat> and Whole Foods is very expensive. Yeah. But if you buy things like the meat when it's on sale, do that. So you go to the farmer's markets, you'd be amazed at how many you know, farmers bring their, um, their produce to, to the market. Mm -hmm. And you can get it very cheap, and everything's in season. So you want to eat in season. You want to um, uh, eat, just cut out all processed food. If you just cut out all processed food alone. Just to start. Just to start. The thing is, people don't know what's processed and what's not. Everything's processed. Right. That, well, that's Re the thing. Just start reading labels. That's what I yeah. did when I, yeah. when I first read about the caveman diet online that day, that fateful day. <laughs> um, I went to my refrigerator and my cabinets and just started reading labels. I ingested so many chemicals. I was... I was sick to myself, yeah. you know, you know, sick to my own stomach. I, For sure. And, and just, I was addicted to Coke Zero, Splenda, 
you know, and that creamer that I used to put in my coffee all the mm-hmm. time. It's just all chemical. Are there any keywords somebody should look for when they're looking at the label that should automatically hold up a red flag and say, okay, stop right here? Yes, it, it's not so much keywords, but it's more of do you recognize everything on that label mm-hmm. as food? Right. <laughs> and uh, if it's got salt, sugar, you know, vinegar, just everything has those things. Mm-hmm. You just want to stay away from it. Vinegar's not so bad, you know, but I, I tend to stay away from fermented things because I'm a little more anal about them. Thing. Okay. Um, but if, if it's got ingredients you don't know what they are, mm-hmm. stay away. If There's a number any- in that word. Maybe you don't want to <laughs> that. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. For sure. If it's got something mm-hmm. enzyme, you know. Yeah. And you know what? Anything chemical sounds. If there's an X, pretty much in pretty that much, word, yes. yeah. cross, yeah. skull and crossbones. Yeah, just stay away. Xanthan gum, mm, yeah, yeah, just yeah. like Grandma used yeah, to make yeah. xanthan gum. That? I love it. <laughs> so I, I I forget what I was watching, but they were there was uh, maybe it was like Bill Maher show or something like yeah. that. They brought someone on who was really passionate about how truly screwed up the food industry yeah. still is, right? And how uh, you know uh, farmers are having a lot of problems, you know, keeping up with demand, and how there's just not enough. Yeah. natural farming going around. Yeah, totally. Th- is there any sort of, you know, uh, trade-off with, with the caveman diet to, to improve that relationship between farmers and, 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 well, and well, food if, markets? Well, if it's really a matter of big agriculture stamping out the little guy, yeah. you know, and, and Monsanto is the real evil bad guy. They're the guys that come up with this GMO mm-hmm. uh, seeds, you know, that, that build the pesticides right into the seed. Right. And it's really making everyone sick. But, the pharmaceutical industry is making a fortune on it, so they don't want anything to end. So they're in bed together, mm-hmm. you know, so so to speak. I'm going to get shot out outside <laughs> by some <laughs> food, big I'm agriculture. Like, like, uh, there he is. There's Nimoy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my sights on Nimoy. Can I take the shot? Can I take the shot? <laughs> There's the caveman. <laughs> so it's really a, a matter of them stamping out the little guy. Yeah. And, uh, it, but, again, if, if the demand was there, the little guy would get and, – and, Organic food is becoming more and more popular. Sure. You know, I just this trip to New York, I've seen more organic restaurants and supermarkets, little shops than I've seen ever before in New mm-hmm. York. Right. And that's the other tip I want to say. Um, forget cutting out. I mean, in addition to cutting out processed food, if they just go organic, even if they still eat grains, mm-hmm. if they go organic, those pesticides do such havoc on your body. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the growth hormones and antibiotics they shoot into the meat. The, the number one buyer of antibiotics is the meat industry. It's mm-hmm. not uh, humans, you know, you know, doctors. It's the meat industry um, because the animals are so sick being penned up and being fed corn and soy and all mm-hmm. these things. So even if you do eat soy, which I don't recommend, even if you do eat wheat, which I don't recommend, if you go organic, you're still doing a lot better for your body than mm-hmm. before. So that's a good first step. Go organic. Mm-hmm. That's interesting because, um, you know, you hear about people and, and Beatmaster in the chat room says people hunting their own food, you know, yeah. going right to the source. What, what do you think about stuff like that? Uh, I wish I was uh, more of a man. Do yeah. it. I can't. Uh, it's, it's pretty just, brutal. It's I, not in it's me. It's tough, yeah. yeah. But I, uh, so the, I have so no problem cave, eating So the it. caveman refuses to kill his own food. <laughs> well, he's in Los Angeles. Yeah, I don't think you'll see any. Buffalo. You'll see a lot of homeless people running around <laughs> on the yeah. freeway. <laughs> I don't know if you want to eat them or no, how, no, no, how no, organic no. their meat I, is. Right, but, uh, I, I, I go around uh, Santa Monica Beach with a crossbow. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, I I have no problem letting someone else kill it yeah. and butchering it. I, right. I have I have this place in Texas called the Broken Arrow Ranch. I ship all my wild game from. So okay. I still eat pork, but my pork is in the form of wild boar. Gotcha. You know, and they, they, they have a way of killing and butchering that's pretty humane in terms of, I mean, as humane as you can get slaughtering an animal. Yeah, you yeah know? absolutely. Uh, but I, I've never been, a, I've never had a problem with eating meat. I'm just not a, I'm, I'm, I'm an eater, not a killer. No, oh, I'm <laughs> understood. I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I, I love a hamburger, but there's no way I'm <laughs> punching that cow in the yeah. face. And I still eat hamburgers all the time. It's just yeah. grass-fed beef. The no cheese, though. Oh, and uh, cheese, you have that's to the problem. Cheese. If you had one of my Ugga Bugger burgers, though, you, oh, I'm sure it's tasty, it. yeah, but it's delicious. cheese is the <coughs> glue of the world. I know, man, it's delicious. I, that's why I cheat once a week. <laughs> that's and, why and cheese is almost always involved in my cheat meal, by the way. It's got to be, it's just and, not but great cheese for is you. always processed. It's right? not great for you. It's not good for you. Yeah, even, it even if you get dairy. even if you get grass fed uh, cheese, like yeah. a grass fed animal, 
it's still not great for you. No. <laughs> There's some good substitutes for cheese, too. I, I have a vegan friend that gave me nutritional yeast um, on, <laughs> on, on a couple of things. That's, and it that wasn't just sounds bad. gross. It, it, just wasn't, sounds it wasn't terrible. cheese exactly, but <laughs> close enough. Nutritional yeast. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, sounds does, like a new STD. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like. Ariel doesn't have a mic today, but Ariel is a vegetarian. What, yeah. the, what does this sound like to you, man? Can you get on board this with sounds this? sounds good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people think it's all you know meat, but vegetarians... And especially raw foodists, mm -hmm. they can thrive on this diet. Mm. Yeah, know? totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's just all about eating healthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, I was, I didn't go vegetarian for you know because I love animals or anything. Yeah, you like don't that. care about that. Yeah, you'll still hit them with you your car. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's just for health reasons, and, right. and no one was ever really able to explain like you know. Um, Organic foods and stuff like that to me. So I mean this makes complete sense. It to does me. and that's yeah. what it did to me too And people think you know you need you need protein you need more animal protein mm. You know that's a myth created by the meat for sure. sellers You for know sure. people who sell you meat you only need about 18% protein to survive and plants give you all that Yeah, mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. definitely be a vegetarian on the paleo diet. Yeah, it's a big myth out there. What about? Um, fish and seafood as long as it's wild caught like no farm raised you know, you know who told you that you need to eat salmon because of all the omega three fat fatty acids? Do we have to go it? beat that guy up? Yeah, it's the people that make farm them. farm raised salmon, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, they're trying to sell you salmon. But the dirty secret of that industry is, farm raised salmon don't have omega three fat mm. because they're just laying on top of each other in a shallow pool, yeah. and they're being fed corn and soy. Yeah. And the reason I keep saying corn and soy is because the government grows corn and soy; they subsidize. Right. So that's why it's really cheap you know, for all these businesses to feed their animals corn and soy. Uh -huh. So uh, a, a farm-raised animal doesn't have, a, a fish rather, doesn't have any of that omega-3. The other little uh, secret about that is all wild animals have omega-3. So your grass-fed cow, not only is it leaner, but the fat it does have is all omega-3. It's really good for you. Mm -hmm. Like lard, if it's from a pasture-raised pig, mm -hmm. it's really healthy for you. Hmm. Much healthier for you than, say, canola oil that all the... the uh, supermarkets are trying to sell you with low fat, low fat, low fat. Fat has gotten a really bad uh, rap, you know? Right. Fat in your body is, you're not going to get fat from eating fat, first mm -hmm. of all. People don't understand that. And if it's really clean, healthy fat, like, you know, organic olive oil, coconut oil, um, you know, not all fats creative e created equal. It's really healthy for you. It's but almost the key to good health. I think a big uh, misconception. Well, you know, if you if you look at the history of the food industry, mm -hmm. first fat was like the first target, right? And then they sort of substituted everything with like sugar instead, right? right and right. now sugar is now like public enemy number Sh one. Sugar's toxic, and it's the most addictive substance on earth. People are. I mean, I I, I saw something on sixty minutes a couple of months ago, and they were saying that sugar will wind up, you know, fifty years from now when it's right. all said and done. <clears throat> It'll wind up being the the rec link to things like cancer and just terrible stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. And and the worst part is how it's infiltrated every facet of of you know like even the school system. Yeah. You know the, what they're feeding kids and right. stuff like that. Right. You can't find regular milk uh, on a kid's plate anymore. It's all yeah. chocolate milk or strawberry milk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that to me is is very upsetting. Yeah. And the caveman diet's got no sugar. The only sugar I eat is in raw organic honey. Yeah. Or in fruit. So it is raw. I feel when you say raw organic honey, yeah. I'm thinking like you got to pick like stingers and hot and like wings out of it. <laughs> like, what is it? Is it really taste good? It's I mean, fantastic. Yeah, it's pure honey. Yeah, it's delicious. I put it in everything. Yeah, yeah. I heard honey. I heard the bees were like going away or something. Like they that. are because of these pesticides. Yeah, it's killing them. Yeah, it's wacky. Right. Um, but even you know the raw organic honey and fruit sugar is still sugar and mm -hmm. should be eaten in moderation. Right. Even in in fruit. Even, Even in everything. The, the reason fruit is so tasty and sugary is because nature intended it for the cavemen to gorge on it during the summer, get fat, and then the lean winter year, uh, months, you, you slowly live off your fat. You know? Interesting. Yeah, so mm. that's why it's so delicious and so sugary. We weren't supposed to eat it year-round. But know? it's have you had... A honey crisp apple. Have you had an organic yes, honey crisp I, apple? Yes, that's what I, I do. I'm not joking. Yeah. I got one here, an organic honey crisp right. apple. And then I, take, I can't really taste the difference between the organic one and the regular one. Well, you know, if you um, 
if your palate was, you know, you didn't have salt for maybe a week or something. Yeah, you think I'd be able to? I definitely think so, because I, I know from experience. Well, maybe if I wasn't chasing it with, like, a Snicker bar, <laughs> I'd also be able to taste the difference <laughs> as well. Because, man, that is the only way to fly. I'm sorry. Frozen? So, Frozen Snicker bar? the best. So, oh, obviously, yeah, candy's out of So, what do you substitute for candy? Because I love candy. <laughs> There's no substitute for No, candy, of course yeah. not. Well, but, if you really wanted, I guess you could do some dried fruit, which actually has more sugar than hard candy. It does. Like, I yeah. love. Uh, what do I dried love? mangoes are good. Dried ma- I love yeah. dried pineapple. It's, it's actually worse for you yeah. than hard candy. I, I heard. So I, go for read, the hard candy. When I read that, I was like, oh, I didn't just read that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, let me move on. I love like the banana chips. Well, well what I do for ice cream, I was I was a big ice cream fan. Yeah. So I take bananas, peel them, put them in the freezer, and uh, I take them out, put them in the fruit processor, whip them up to the, the consistency of ice cream, mm-hmm. put anything I want in it, like, you know, uh, pistachios and yeah. cherries or whatever your favorite thing is. And uh, it's delicious. I have right. a video of that, you know. And it sounds good. I, strawberries, fresh strawberries, fresh bananas, just those two ingredients. And it's the best strawberry ice cream you've ever had. The right. freshest. And it's completely healthy for you. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I'm looking at my buddy Justin over here. And yeah. I'm thinking. What am I going to eat? Well, I'm just thinking because this guy arguably. <laughs> I eat eats really bad. Worse than be anyone really I know. Yeah, and that's fine. I do. Look, like, you know, like what's a typical lunch for you? Oh, oh man. Wait. T- just, just, why don't we just tell him what. What you're guilty well, okay, of. yeah. Uh, there's a deli across the street called Chicken Deli, mm-hmm. and there's the Justin sandwich there. You know about this. I <laughs> ordered course. the Justin. Tell, they know if I named it, and they named it after they, you. They named it after me. Tell it's Jeff. It's not Jeff on the menu, inside. but if I say the Justin, right, they know right. what I'm you're talking like, about. Like I'll yeah. have, I'll have a me. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> God, this is gonna be embarrassing to say. Wait, t- oh, you're you right now. Jeff's gonna pass out. I'm gonna gain weight as I say that sentence. But that's impossible. Look at you. It's a chicken, fried chicken cutlet, bacon. Cheddar cheese, mm-hmm. cucumber, and what was the last? Frank's, is it Frank's Red Hot? And Frank's Red Hot yeah, yeah. on okay. a salt bagel. Oh. On a salt bagel? <laughs> on a salt bagel. All right, now. Deep I fried. Don't, I don't know how your uh, high blood pressure is. Have you I'm fine, it? yeah, yeah. I okay. had a, a physical recently. As Very well. good. Mm-hmm. Good luck to you. You know, A lot of people <laughs> can't do that. I can recreate that sandwich with everything but the salt. Mm, excuse me. And the I'm, taste. I'm dying from the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it would be delicious. Yeah. You know, it, after your taste buds come back alive after not having salt <laughs> yeah. for a week, because right now it would taste very bland. Right. But after a week of not no salt, it would taste delicious. I could do everything but the salt bagel, and the cheese. Mm-hmm. I can recreate everything else. Bacon is bacon okay in the paleo? Well, I can get my wild boar pork belly. Mm. Yeah. And make you some, you know, cut some slices of bacon off of that. It won't be salty. It won't be the bacon you're used to. But it'll be that delicious porkiness. Mm. You know, it'll be that smoky, maybe. Sort you can of. smoke it, sure. Yeah. You can, you know. Yeah. Huh. You know, and and the the chicken, I'll get my pasture raised chicken that only eats bugs and worms and grass and mm-hmm. seeds. They're not eating corn and soy, and right. they're roaming around, which is a big part. You know, they move. Yeah. You know, instead of you know being topped on top of each other in some um, hangar. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can get that chicken, then I can bread it in either coconut flour mm-hmm. or grind up some almonds and some almond flour, and I could fry it in olive oil or coconut oil. Mm. You know? So I can make that for you. I could bake my own bread. Uh, cucumbers, obviously. You it's know, fine. It's, it's a, what about it's, the McDonald's fries that I buy on the side and put on the sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> There's no okay. substitute for well, that. I can, I, can, I, can that. Get some, I can get some parsnips yeah. Yeah. and cut them up there and uh, fry them up or bake them up. And uh, or if you don't like that, you know, turnips, there's a lot of things I can make fr- French fries out of. Mm. You, 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 it sounds like you're able to sort of deconstruct any like sandwich. That. That's the thing, you know. Put it through the caveman car wash. Right. That's what you need to do. You should have a, a, a little like, you know, normal to caveman translator. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, can, I can make noodles out of uh, zucchini and yeah. parsnips and all these things. I, I eat pasta. Only my pasta is you know, not, not processed. Mm-hmm. You know, it's made out of vegetables. I can do anything like that. And anyone can. Everyone has excuses. Well, it's too well, hard. All the excuse I'm going to give you right now is it took Justin 30 seconds to get that. It sounds like that's a four hour <laughs> meal. It's a commitment. It's, you know, it's not yeah. a four-hour meal once you, you know, have yeah. things But realistically, down. to recreate that sandwich, what are, right. we t- what are we talking? Well, but here's the uh, here's the best thing about it. Yeah. After you eat my sandwich, you're not going to get cancer. Right, you, I understand. You can only, <laughs> you're going to die. You can right only, what are you going to say? No, but Justin, right. yeah, Justin, it's been nice saying. knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell this story at your funeral. We'll all oh. have a good laugh. Oh. He could have had the paleo diet. Goodbye, And, and it won't be overnight, you know. It, of course. Yeah. These are the things. That's why, you know, you can eat wheat, right? But after 70 years of eating wheat, mm-hmm. Those toxins will build up in your system. Yeah. Sure. You'll get things like diabetes. Right. Or, and that's why all these things happen later in life. Mm-hmm. You know? 
So well, yeah, I fully understand that. If look, I keep this diet up, it's not going to be good. Exactly. So I'm going to have to change it at some point. Look, the more time it takes yeah. for me to have this habit going, it's going to be harder right. to kick. Look, health isn't for everyone. Yeah. But you're a young man. You can change your life. Yeah. The <laughs> thing is, is, I'm worried about, like, I don't know what would happen to him if he went on the caveman diet. Because oh, look at him. He's, yeah. he's just disappear. Uh, he's I'll, skinny as hell. Oh, I'll just take over. I'll sit in that seat. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this guy, right? But the paleo diet's not all about weight I know. It's not right? about It's weight about fitness. It's just an added bonus. It's more about It's a beneficial side effect. Well, the other night you were saying you and toxic free. You mm -hmm. don't even work. You don't work out that much, I right? I don't know. That's so you great. Have, so you, you, can, you you need to have some sort of exercise in in combination you with that. You should. Yeah. I don't because I'm right. a lazy bastard. But <laughs> in you, that you field. should. And and the paleo diet, a lot of it, they like you were said, running barefoot, using your own body weight to pull yourself up, right? And like that. Yeah. You know. But I'm in the best shape of my life. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. yeah without exercise, it's just pure diet. And in, in no matter what exercise you do, yeah, it's still only about. 20%, 30% tops of weight loss. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much you work out. Diet is still going to be 70 to 80% of that weight loss. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, before we have to say goodbye for the day, Beatmaster in the chat room says, what do you think about the mushroom-based corn? Have you heard about this? I have it's not. It's Q-U-O-R-N. No, you never heard I've of that? never heard of that. All right, you'll get back to us on it. Um, I want to we'll talk a little bit up. more about sameplate.com before yeah. we have to go. Okay, yeah. And I want to have some personal experiences, too, because that's why we have Zach on the show. He's our yeah. resident online dating advisor. Even though he's been in a serious yeah. relationship for a very long time. I'm also the political advisor. What was he last time? The political advisor. Yeah, the senior political advisor. the point advisor, too. Senior pornographic advisor. They were getting rid of the porn in LA. Did you just call him the jack of all trades? But I do want to... I do want to talk about... Uh, Please, I have place. Digimon uh, listeners. <laughs> yeah. Keep it Tainting their fragile ears. Oh, no. <laughs> but the whole uh, the whole foodie preference thing is really interesting because yeah. um, I was on OkCupid for a while, and I have yeah. a girlfriend. But um, I remember my go-to first date restaurant mm -hmm. would always be something of like a litmus test for how what kind of personality they are, how right. adventurous they are. So I'd always take them to one of three places. A yeah. pho restaurant, right. a, a Chinese restaurant, That's like Vietnamese Wohop. soup. Oh, okay. Vietnamese soup, yeah. Like, uh, soup Wohop, noodles. I went to Wohop last night. Wohop's great. There you Either go. Wohop or um, some other kind of Asian food. Right. That's to see how open-minded they are and exactly. if they are and willing to eat it. And it's important it's to you. There Even you if go. they don't like it, as long as they're respectful, that's someone right. that I want to continue dating. People don't realize that food is such plays such a, a huge part in mm -hmm. relationships. And because you do it three times a day, you know, where sex is maybe, you know, if you're lucky, you know, five times a week. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and even then it's, you know, a couple of minutes every time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe where you the shop. The way I'm but... doing it, where I shop, yeah. <laughs> I got to change stores. Yeah, you do. Um, so, uh, so, you know, if you're going to eat with a person yeah. that much, it's, it's a big thing, you know. So uh, I always have the same thing as well. You know, I take people to my favorite sushi restaurant mm -hmm. and see how adventurous they are mm -hmm. because – uh, I, I like my certain things, you know. Right. And the the beautiful thing for me about same plate is, uh, it almost takes like the dating aspects out of it because I've been on every dating site known to mankind. Sure. Mm -hmm. No one knows more about the co combo of online dating and eating than me. Mm -hmm. sure. So you know, it's always the same. You type a little letter. Oh, I think we have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. Right. I think you're really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> if you think I'm uh, good looking too, maybe we can get together. Yeah. You know, the, you take all that out of the equation for the same plate. You just go, oh my God, I saw that picture of that burger you put on there. Right, right. We're in the same neighborhood. Where did you get it? And maybe we can share a burger together. Right. You know, and you just go for a meal. No big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's the sort of slogan. You just go for a meal and it takes all that pressure of dating out. And if romance blooms, fantastic. You know, but if if not, you just get a great burger out of yeah, the deal. Yeah, you know, worst case, I'm eating well. And yeah, cool. yeah. And if you if you do have a weed allergy, it's so hard to eat out. Yeah. But if you go out with someone else, you're not like you know tempted by your date's bowl of pasta that he yeah, just ordered, right, you know, right. like eating a plain chicken breast. You know, mm -hmm. so you can just go out and you could share food together and yeah. things like that. It you makes know? sense. Yeah, and uh, and hopefully romance blooms. Yeah. As well. Right on. I went on a few uh, dates on OkCupid, and yeah. um, I quickly learned that going to dinner and ha and sharing a long meal on the first date might not always be the best idea, but that's why I like Same Plate, because it matches you up based on the food preferences you like, right. not the restaurants you like going yeah. to. But even if it's a, a coffee date, your right. first date is always food-related. Right. You, know? you talk about it sometimes you during the date. You talk about it. Right. Have if, dessert. If, if it's like, I don't want to go out with someone, I want to have coffee with them first. Well, mm -hmm. that's food-related, you know? I just want to go for lunch. It's food-related. Right. So it's And the first thing, even if you just talk about the phone what's the first thing you can do to get together you share food mm -hmm. so uh, I, I just cut right to the chase and go right to the meal right, right on <laughs> very cool make sure you check out the website sameplate.com find your food related romance there you can follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff Nimoy follow sameplate 
on Twitter at same plate date. There you go. Also, you. buy the book. Yeah, the Cooking Caveman. We'll link to that. Uh, the Amazon link uh, in our show notes today. It's everywhere ebooks are sold. Fantastic. Right. Go to cookingcaveman.com and check out Jeff's blog about eating like a caveman. Not looking like a caveman, <laughs> just eating like what? Okay? Bugga bugga. Because I got the looking like one down pat. <laughs> so smelling too. Zach right here. Yeah, yeah, Zach's, like yeah. Zach's got that caveman chest hair that we uh, all uh, strive for. It. Caveman like. Uh. It keeps me warm in the winter. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. A pleasure meeting you. Come back when you're in town next time. Thanks, right? guys. You guys Absolutely. are great. Thanks really appreciate it. We'll be back tomorrow. Steve the Gutman, Guttenberg will be here yeah. finishing up the week. And then only two more weeks of 404 before we say goodbye for 2012. It's a fast year and a quick way to go out. But we're recording Yuletide episodes starting next week. That's right. So uh, we'll keep you guys updated on those topics. And thanks for everyone submitting their ideas for shows. We will be back tomorrow. Until then, 866-404-CNET is the number to call. The 404 at CNET.com is our email. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Jeff Nimoy. I'm Zach Weinberg. It's the 404 Show High Tech Low Brow. Thanks again to Jeff Nimoy. We will be back tomorrow. See ya.